From the mind of James Cameron, and with Catherine Bigelow at the helm, Strange Days was one of many 90s science fiction films to explore a dystopian future where technology, and virtual reality in particular, plays an important role. The future depicted in Strange Days is not necessarily as apocalyptic as the one in the Terminator films, but the end of the world is most definitely on every character's mind as the film plays on the pre-millennial panic that manifested itself at the end of the last century. But a new day is coming! 2K is coming! The day of reckoning is upon us! History is and begins again! Right here! Right now! Strange Days takes place in LA during the last two days of 1999. Los Angeles is in a state of social unrest following the murder of a rapper activist called Jericho One at the hands of the police. Rafe Fiennes plays Lenny Nero, an ex-cop turned black market peddler of legal recordings of people's memories and experiences that could be played back through a virtual reality headset called a squid. This is not like TV only better. This is life. It's a piece of somebody's life. It's pure and uncut, straight from the cerebral cortex. I mean, you're there, you're doing it, you're seeing it, you're hearing it, you're feeling it. Lenny is the charming anti-hero, a slippery character, hustling his way in and out of tricky situations, all in the name of earning a fast buck. Lenny doesn't take things too seriously and isn't too occupied with the future or even the present. He prefers to retreat into the past, hooked on recordings of good time spent with his ex-girlfriend Faith played by Juliette Lewis, who he still holds a candle for. Angela Bassett plays Mace. Having lost her husband to drugs, she has had to become a tough single mother. In a film of corrupt and shady characters, she is depicted as a character of strength and integrity. And in spite of disapproving of Lenny's lifestyle and the squid technology, which she likens to a drug, she is a loyal ally to Lenny, and more than that, a moral compass for him and for the story as a whole. Mace, you're my friend. I need you, plus I'll give you 25% of what I make tonight. You know, this may be a hard concept for you, but friends don't have to pay their friends. Mace is cut from the same cloth as Cameron Sarah Connor, and in the finale of the film, she takes the future in her hands in very much the same way when she's given the clip that will prove instrumental in getting to the truth behind the murder of Jericho One and bring an end to corruption in the city. You know how I know it's the end of the world, Lenny? No, tell me. Because everything's already been done, you know? Every kind of music's been tried, every government's been tried, you know? Every fucking hairstyle, fucking bubblegum flavors, you know, breakfast cereal, every type of fucking, you know what I mean? What are we gonna do, man? How are we gonna make another thousand years, for Christ's sake? I'm telling you, man, it's over. We used it all up. Strange Days is an interesting merging of genres part action movie, part science fiction thriller, but clearly the most prominent influence is film noir. Let's call it neon noir. Beyond the futuristic neon glow of Bigelow's depiction of LA, we see all the trademarks of the film noir. We have an unwitting detective, a corrupt city, double crosses, and a femme fatale in Lenny's ex-girlfriend, Faith. One iconic film noir in particular that's clearly an influence is King Vidor's Gilda, starring Rita Hayworth and Glenn Ford. Let's take a look. There are many scenes in both films that have striking similarities. Both films are set around New Year's Eve. In both films, we have scenes where the femme fatales cavort with other men, infuriating their ex-lovers. More noticeably, in both films, Faith and Gilda perform in the nightclubs owned by their powerful lovers, providing us with the telling moment of the desire both Lenny and Johnny harbour for their lost loves. Faith gyrates and belts out her song like it's a post-grunge version of Rita Hayworth performing Put the Blame on Mame. Finally, the biggest tell or homage is the similarity in costuming. It's surely not a coincidence. I know what you think about The Wire, but you gotta see it. It's that important. Throughout Strange Days, there is a lot of importance around the act of seeing. Close-ups of eyes are repeated throughout, 
but the nature of the squid device is about seeing life through someone else's eyes. It's mentioned that the origin of the device was surveillance, but much like drones being co-opted for consumer use today, the squid has become a thrill-seeker's toy that erodes the lines of privacy and becomes an act of voyeurism. From the start of the film, Bigelow immerses us into illicit thrills as we are plunged into the point of view of an armed robber, later on sex, and in one scene, Tex, a wheelchair-bound character with no legs, gets to live out the sensation of running barefoot on the beach. The cheap thrills are easy to stomach, it's the ones that lead to the truth and enlightenment that are harder to swallow. Oh man, oh, that is one unbelievable piece of eye fuck. Just give the art criticism, Tick. What can you tell me about the wearer? <sighs> that guy is fucked up. We know that, Tick. The act of watching these clips is depicted as torturous and ultimately deadly. The simulations of rape and murder overload the senses of the brain and result in the catatonic death of several characters. In order to solve the mystery centered around the death of a prostitute in Jericho 1, Lenny is drip feeded a series of clips that are left like breadcrumbs. It is the aptly named Iris who witnesses Jericho 1's murder while wearing a concealed squid recording device. She is the one who gets the clip to Lenny. Her rape and murder is also recorded and sent to Lenny to witness and it's agonizingly difficult to watch. Not just for Lenny, but for us as the audience as we're forced into the first person perspective of the hideous act. At the midpoint, we have a pivotal scene that changes everything and brings us another hard truth. Mace, at the insistence of Lenny, puts aside her resistance to clips and agrees to watch the clip of Jericho 1's murder. Witnessing the hard truth brings trauma to Mace, but in an interesting narrative twist, it brings her character from the outer margins right into the heart of the story. She is spurred into action and determined to bring that truth to light. Do you know what this tape could do if it got out? Yeah, I got a pretty good idea. We will find them out. See? That the LAPD just flat out executed Jericho one. Jesus. Jesus. Maybe they ought to see. There's a novelty of watching a science fiction film from the past. It can serve as a time capsule of the time the film was made in. Space exploration becomes a metaphor for colonization. The space race for the Cold War and aliens become a metaphor for immigration fears or the threat of communism. Usually these concerns pass. Having used the trial of Rodney King and the 1992 LA riots as his jumping off point, Strange Days reflected the concerns around American race relations and the impact of police brutality. In many ways, it could be seen as being very prescient. 25 years after its release, however, as we watch the social division, police brutality and unrest play out in cities across the world, the ending of Strange Days just feels too naive and optimistic. clip revealing Jericho One's death comes to light and brings justice, unity and a romantic kiss, a typical Hollywood ending. When the credits roll and we see pictures of the cast, the spell of the movie is broken and we unplug from the film and return to reality. We are quickly reminded that one clip or the thousand clips that we are bombarded with on the internet and social media haven't brought much change or justice. We realise strange days it was just a vicarious thrill, a fantasy. We're stuck in a loop, repeating history, living in our own dystopia, and the hope and optimism in strange days feels about as real as Tex's legs. <laughs> and that's my take on strange days. Thanks for watching the latest episode of Movie Birthdays. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you want to see more, 
please hit subscribe. See you next time.